Apple will announce some pretty big updates to the iPad at WWDC this week, including a new app called Sidecar. It allows you to use your Apple Pencil natively on your Mac using your iPad. Let's check it out. This video is sponsored by Paperlike, the screen protector for your iPad that feels like you're drawing on real paper. While introducing Sidecar at WWDC today, Craig Federici talked about the benefits of being able to have a second screen that you can take with you for your Mac anywhere you go. And he showed on stage how you can use your iPad as a true second monitor for your Mac using this new Mac OS update. There are already several apps out there that do that already. Duet Display comes to mind, Astro Pad comes to mind, and this looks like native functionality within the Macintosh and iPad operating systems that mimic what something like AstroPad's Luna or Duet Display already does. So all of this is pretty basic, but what about the Apple Pencil? Well, Craig's got you covered there too. In the video, he's got a Cintiq Pro up on the screen and it is literally being swept to the side by the iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. He was also able to confirm that this works wired and wirelessly. There are a lot of important things that we just don't know about Sidecar yet, some of the fine details. How is this actually going to work? Is it going to be an app that runs on your Mac and an app that runs on your iPad that connects the two? Is it going to work more like AirPlay where it's just a native functionality built into the iPad? There are some small subtle clues as to what's going on in the screenshots that appear behind Craig on stage while he was talking. It's hard to see in the video, but clearly there are some screen keyboard shortcuts here. It's hard to tell what they all are. These are the important keys like your command, your option, your control. Up here we have some up and down arrows maybe. Maybe that controls brush size. Looking along the bottom, it's even harder to tell what these do, but clearly there are some shortcuts that are available to you. Also noteworthy is these controls aren't going to be on the screen all the time. It looks like you're going to be able to toggle them on and off. One of the screenshots they're there and the next one they're not. I'm really curious if we'll be able to go in and customize those buttons, have different things show up based on our workflow and how, how you want to use it. And just taking a look at the screenshot, there is more room on the screen for more buttons. However, he probably is using the larger iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch. Maybe on an iPad mini, there's not quite as much room for buttons and that's why they're more spaced out here. It's hard to tell. Apple introduced a lot of other things for the iPad as well, including some universal hand gestures. There's some new controls for copying and pasting. They've also introduced a universal three finger swipe backwards to undo. Procreate, one of the most popular, if not the most popular drawing app available for the iPad, already has some undo features. They use two finger tap for undo and many other, in fact, most other drawing and painting applications for the iPad have gone ahead and adopted this standard. I love it because I can use two fingers to undo, but if I hold those fingers on the canvas, usually it does multiple undos at a time. So if I'm drawing a lot of lines doing cross hatching or something like that, it's really easy to erase like 30 or 40 marks like really quickly. And then three fingers down on the canvas, that's going to redo all those if I need to. And if you think about a three finger swipe to undo, you know, doing that over and over and over again in an art environment, I'm not so sure. Also, Procreate is pretty customizable. So even if they use that three finger default undo, I wouldn't be surprised if you could still go into the settings and set it up the way it currently is, the kind of workflow that everybody's used to. But that's not all. There were other cool features announced for the iPad today. First, the iPad has outgrown iOS. They have renamed it iPad OS. Looking back at the reviews of the iPad Pro as it came out last fall, almost universally, at least within most mainstream outlets, said the same thing. The iPad Pro is powerful and it's great and we love it, but it does not take advantage of all this power and it can't replace a, a normal laptop workflow. And when you take a look at what they're doing here, it's pretty clear they've taken some of the feedback they've gotten from those reviews and from other people and are addressing those concerns and trying to make the iPad just as usable to pro level users as a laptop would be. One of the things I thought was really cool was the addition of fonts. They didn't go into too much detail about this, but it'd be really great to be able to add fonts on a universal level. Right now, a font needs to be added like on an app by app basis, whether you're in Procreate or Affinity Designer or something like that. It'd be nice to just do it at a system level and be done with it. Coming from a design background, if they could be able to work with Adobe and some of the other font manufacturers out there, man, that would be a huge deal. They also showed off some better split screening features, some better desktop and home screen features. They're also adding some cool features to the Apple Pencil. First, they got the latency down to 9mm, MS? I'm getting that wrong. I didn't know you could do that through software, but that's pretty cool. Dragging your pencil up from the bottom of the screen is gonna automatically create a shortcut. In apps like Note, there's now an Apple Pencil toolbar that comes with you. It even looks like they're keeping an eye on what Microsoft is doing and some of the things that they've implemented with Windows Inc. And I love all these features that they're adding to iOS or iPad OS to really make it a feature-rich operating system. 
There is one little tiny problem. As I was watching this, what I saw is every time there was some kind of new functionality or added or anything like that, what it was all controlled with and through were different gestures. And this isn't a huge deal. The iPad is still incredibly usable if you don't know those gestures, but the problem with gestures in general is they're not discoverable. You're not gonna accidentally stumble upon the fact that three fingers back is undo or pinch out is copy or some of the things they're doing to make split screens or, or, or that sort of thing that they just aren't things you're gonna stumble upon. You have to know they're there before you can use them. Now for power users using this stuff every day, that's fantastic, but for new users jumping in and not knowing any of these, it could be a little bit overwhelming. Maybe this is just the downside of a Touch OS. If you look at Windows or if you look at a Mac, everything is laid out in front of you. Visually, you can see almost every single function that, that you can do, whereas the iPad's flipped. You can't see most of those things. They're most gesture control. I want to throw in a quick note here about our sponsor Paperlike. If you like drawing on the iPad but think this glossy screen is kind of slick and I don't have a lot of control, that's what Paperlike is here for. It has some grit to it so you have more control when you're drawing. It just feels more natural. You can get Paperlike for any size iPad from the 12.9 iPad Pro all the way down to the brand new mini. Check out the link at the top of the description down below to learn more. And for you ASMR fans, I made this for you. So that is the news portion of the video. That is what we learned today. If you wanna bail at this point, please go ahead because from this point on, I'm gonna cry in my beer a little bit. I'm not actually drinking beer, this is this is just water, but it's a figure of speech. I have mixed feelings about Sidecar. When I first saw that picture of someone drawing on a Mac, I didn't cheer. My heart sank, it looks like a great feature. It looks like a good way to bring Apple Pencil support to a Mac without doing an entire overhaul of the interface. So if it looks good and everybody thinks it's a good idea and it makes so much sense, why was I sad? I was sad because I really like AstroPad. AstroPad is an app. Actually, it's two apps and a little dongle you can plug into your computer. And they've been basically doing the same thing that Apple announced today. They've been doing that for like four years, four plus years. And Luna Display has been doing the same thing. And everything those companies have done and built over the last several years now is just automatically part of the operating system. I like AstroPad, I like the app, I like the team who works on AstroPad, and most of all, I like the way that they approach software development. And when I watched this press conference, and really the sidecar thing was like 30 seconds, maybe a minute of the press conference, I realized what this probably means for their app. I should also point out at this point, I, I haven't talked to anybody at AstroPad. I have no idea what they're thinking at this point. I'm sure if I did, they'd probably give me like the normal answer you give in this circumstance, which is we feel confident about our app and we're looking forward to the future and we have a lot of features and stuff like that. And if you think about it, there's a lot of things that AstroPad, especially AstroPad Studio is doing right now that Sidecar probably isn't gonna do. For example, customizable shortcuts or even being able to customize shortcuts on an app by app basis. So if I switch between Photoshop and go over to Adobe Illustrator, all my shortcuts flip automatically. Probably not going to exist in Sidecar. If I don't like the way Apple has implemented the three finger swipe to undo, I could always change that in software like AstroPad Studio. So there's still a lot of opportunity for them to build an app that's really customized for illustrators and artists, the stuff that power users really want. And something that could work on top of Sidecar or next to Sidecar really well. And I know there's people who are subscribed to AstroPad Studio right now, even though it costs extra, but they love those extra features and functionality that it provides. I still worry, who knows? Maybe this is one of those things where once Apple introduces the functionality, more people will come into the platform, more people will get these devices, and their user base will actually grow. I really, I really hope that's the case. AstroPad had this great tweet after the event. They said, you may have heard the news, we did too. Apple has decided to dabble in the connected workspace domain that we know super well. We've always doubled down on delivering rich features and low latency input. Why? Because that's user driven and that's what we do. Stay tuned. That low latency thing is a very important point here. I should also point out nobody's used Sidecar yet, so we don't know if it's actually any good. Might be really laggy. We've seen a lot of companies try this. I think AstroPad is the only company in, in my humble opinion that's actually pulled this off well. If you apply a little bit of a pressure with the Apple Pencil and it kicks in just a like a fraction of a second too late, or if you start drawing and it takes two or three pixels before it actually picks up the pencil input, little things like that 
can absolutely kill an experience. It makes it really hard to just draw a simple circle and like close the ends of it. It's, it's really, really basic, but it's hard to nail. That immersion of I am drawing a thing to a thing is being drawn based on what I'm doing. It's a, it's a thin, thin line. If this was any other company, not to knock Google or Microsoft or anybody else who makes operating system software, if they said they were doing this, I'd be like, oh yeah, AstroPad's still got a place. But this is Apple and Apple tends to focus on things like latency. That's, that's, they make good software. Don't show me that iTunes logo. They're getting rid of you. Back in the day before this was like a real YouTube channel and I was just a doofus on the internet posting videos randomly instead of a doofus posting videos every single week, I reviewed AstroPad. This was like months before the iPad Pro. We didn't know the Apple Pencil was a thing. I was just goofing around. We were using styluses that either had like those soft tips that were super inaccurate or the ones with like the disc tips that were trying to look like a real pencil, but weren't. If you want to see a really bad video and know where I started, that that video is ancient. That video is over four years old. It's kind of funny because the story of this channel is the story of me goofing around on the iPad, playing with different apps, and all of a sudden Apple's like, hey, here's some real art tools to play with, and people found and watched my videos. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time, and back then, Nobody really knew what AstroPad was. I thought, hey, this is kind of a novel concept. It, it looks kind of cool, so I tested it out. And even then, before it was way fast like it is now, I thought, holy cow, this is an amazing thing. This is really cool. And, and from that review and some of the other videos I did early on, I got to know them. Not super well, but we exchanged emails or we'd ping each other on Twitter. It started because I liked their software and I also liked their design philosophy of how they built software. As other apps would come along later, they'd look at drawing as a feature they could just kind of plug into their app. But with AstroPad, drawing wasn't a feature, drawing was the experience. Does this make me biased? Does this make it hard for me to review products? Maybe, probably, but it started because of the quality of the product, not because I got the chat with the team. Procreate, Affinity, Sketchable over on Windows, all of those were products where I thought, wow, these are really good products. And then after the fact, I connected up with the teams. I do have friends that work at Adobe and Apple too, and I have not held back <laughs> my criticism of those companies. And also people know who they work for. I mean, if somebody works for Adobe or Apple, they they know that their companies are doing things because they just want to make more money. We, we all understand that. Oftentimes these little developers are making decisions because they're trying to just survive and grow. They're not big behemoths like Adobe and Apple are. I spent about the first 10 years of my career working in software development. I was a UX and UI designer, so I was often the only designer on a team of software developers. So I have a pretty decent, maybe vague idea, at least how the business side of most of this stuff works and especially how the product development side of this stuff works. The economics of software development are really hard. I've said this before in videos, I guess I'll say this again. I have no idea how Procreate's business model works. The fact that we pay $10 one time for an amazing piece of software and it gets updated forever for free. How does that work? I guess more people are buying iPads and more people are buying the software, but at some point you'd think they'd hit a ceiling. I don't know, I, I, I really don't know, but it's an amazing piece of software. And part of me worries, where are we gonna be in a couple years when we hit that saturation point? Are they still gonna be a viable quality product? I think people who do good work should prosper. I think people who do good work should be rewarded for that good work. And I get it, most people don't like high prices. I don't like high prices either, but really when you think about it, you get what you pay for. If a company can't make enough money, they die or they get bought by Adobe or something really bad. Did I just say getting bought by Adobe is worse than dying? Software development can be harsh. This is a very long-winded way of me saying that when I saw Sidebar introduced, I just thought, oh, what does this mean for AstroPad? A company that's been doing everything right has just been crushed accidentally or on purpose or just because it makes sense for Apple, they've been crushed by a giant. They're one of the good ones. They're doing it right. I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope that they've built a really good business around AstroPad Studio and they have a consistent stable of people paying that annual subscription. And I hope it grows and thrives and becomes a really great companion app that can work either with Sidecar or on its own like it currently does. And I really hope that in two years, people look back at this video and go, this guy is an idiot. Ooh, got my first comment. Hey, I said, wait two years. If you have the opportunity to support your favorite software or hardware creators, and I, I 
understand not everybody can, but if you can, I would encourage you to do so. Most software makers, especially the smaller companies, are not money hungry monsters. Most of them are just small teams. They're, they're working on something they love. They're trying to make a living doing it, working on something we love too. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you in a couple of days.